On Monday, September 17, 2018, SpaceX unveiled their plans for the first crewed mission of the Big Falcon rocket, this consisting of a flyby of our celestial neighbor, the Moon. Now, who will be going on this mission? What updates have they made to the Big Falcon spaceship? And could Elon Musk be on board? Let's talk about that. Now let's start out with a little bit of a backstory regarding this flyby of the moon. In early 2017, SpaceX announced that they would be flying two undisclosed customers on a trip around the moon in their Crew Dragon capsule, with plans of this occurring in late 2018. However, earlier this year when the Falcon Heavy launched, Elon Musk later said that they would probably be switching from a Crew Dragon mission to a Big Falcon rocket mission, pushing it back a few years. Now this recent announcement disclosed who this customer is, as well as the reasoning behind why he wants to go to the moon. This being Yuzak Maozawa, or we will refer to as MZ. Now they're not going to disclose how much he paid for all the seats or the trip, however they did mention what the mission would entail. This being that MZ would select anywhere from 6 to 8 artists to join him on the flyby of the moon, with various backgrounds not only from their fields but also from different areas of the globe, mainly trying to get a global perspective on the moon and inspire them and their future work. Now the idea for this mission would happen in 2023. Now let's jump over to the Big Falcon rocket and the Big Falcon spaceship and talk about some of the technological changes that were discussed in this announcement. Now the first of these updates being that they increased the volumetric payload of the forward section, now being up to 1100 meters cubed. And to put that into perspective, the entire International Space Station is only 930 meters cubed. Therefore, it has a bigger volume than the ISS. Now, the maximum capacity of the BFS is 100 people, which is pretty massive. However, that might change depending on whether they're doing a lunar mission or going to Mars. In addition, they also said that the interior design will be able to change. And in terms of some of the external changes to the BFS, there's been added canards or actuated forward fins that are going to help it in its ability to land when it re-enters an atmosphere. In addition, it's about 55 meters long, the BFS spacecraft altogether, and it will consist of seven Raptor engines, which can be interchanged between vacuum and sea level engines, depending on how much payload you need near the aft. Now one of the most notable differences from the previous BFS design to this one are the aft wings, the major wings that are at the end. Now the major reason for these three fins on the BFS is to control the spacecraft when re-entering the atmosphere, and it looks somewhat similar to the space shuttle. However, it will land vertically rather than landing horizontally. Now the reason that the wings have to actuate or move backwards is because if you take a typical symmetric rocket with fixed wings, it's going to want to face directly into the wind. However, when you're re-entering an atmosphere, you want to have a high surface area to cause a lot of drag. But what the rocket will want to do is face directly into the wind. So to be able to ease the controllability and to pitch upwards, you can move those two fins backwards therefore reducing the local drag on the fins, however increasing the overall drag on the spacecraft. Now after discussing some of the major changes to the BFS, Elon Musk also went into the Raptor engine, showing a longer extended video of the Raptor engine being used, saying that it's capable of 200 ton thrust and an ISP value of 380. Now this being compared to the space shuttle main engine isn't as efficient, However, they are using methane as their rocket fuel, which makes it a little bit more challenging since that hasn't been used in a launch vehicle before. Now, speaking of methane, Elon Musk went to say that the spacecraft would be able to take around 100 metric tons to really anywhere in the solar system, and this is just solely dependent on how well it can be refueled. For example, he mentioned that if you have a refueling station on Mars, then he can use that as a depot to then take you to the Jovian system, or some of the moons around Jupiter, which is much more challenging if you want to go directly from Earth, making it a little bit easier if we were to leave from Mars. Now they did have a brief overview of the mission that would occur in 2023. They haven't finalized the trajectory just yet, however they want to get as close to the moon as possible without interfering with the actual surface because they're not landing, they're just flying by. However, they predict that the overall length of the mission will be around a week, maybe four to five days on the shorter end. Now they also went in to discuss some of the timelines of what they predict over the next few years. They started out by discussing what they're currently working on being some of the main central cylinder sections of the BFR, with some plans over the near future to develop the dome and the engine section of these rockets. 
Therefore, they then wanted to go into what they foresee in the future, with plans by the end of 2019 to see some vertical landing and hopping tests of the big Falcon spaceship. Then in 2020, trying to do high altitude tests and be able to land back down. Maybe in 2021, seeing some orbital flights. 2022, testing a lot more functions of the rocket itself, and then having the mission happen in 2023. Therefore, this is their timeline for what they predict to happen over the next few years. So now I wanna quickly go through some of the questions people had, as well as some concerns that people had after the fact. The first one being, where are the grid fins on the Big Falcon booster or the first stage in the renderings? And it turns out they just forgot to include those. They still plan on having them to help land the booster. The second main point is people wanted to know how much SpaceX is currently putting into the Big Falcon rocket. And Musk said that less than 5% is currently devoted towards that project. However, he hopes that over the next few years that greatly increases to be a main focus for the company after the success of Crew Dragon and some of the other Falcon Heavy launches. Now people were also curious to know how much the development of the Big Falcon rocket would actually cost. And Musk said around $5 billion, but really it could range anywhere from two to $10 billion in the outermost ranges that he expected. Now that sounds like a lot of money, $10 billion. However, when you put that into perspective of the aerospace industry, if you look at the Orion capsule that has never had a crewed mission yet and has been in development over the last 12 years, it's cost $11 billion. And this is just the upper capsule, the upper spaceship. Whereas SpaceX thinks they can do it cheaper than that and also create a launch vehicle underneath. Now the last personal question or concern that I have for the new design of the Big Falcon rocket is in regard to the center of pressure. I know that the Raptor engines are capable of gimbling and controlling the rocket on ascent. However, I do know that it's probably going to be moving the center of pressure above the center of gravity, which usually makes it a little bit more unstable in terms of the rocket actually flying upwards. So I'm interested to see what control authority they have over the rocket during its ascent or max Q stages and what they're going to do to try and minimize its instability. But with that being said, what do you think? Do you think they'll be able to reach the 2023 timeframe? And how much do you think a big Falcon rocket around the moon, a trip like that actually costs? Let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.